Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And this time I want to talk to you about f-strings. F-strings have been around in Python for a few years already, ever since Python 3.6. And I still think they are one of the best and most important things that have been added to the language in the last few years. And it's just because they're so incredibly useful. They don't add a lot of new functionality to the language, but they do make it easier for us to express various things. So let me show you some uh, examples of where things were frustrating in the past without f-strings and how f-strings can change that. So let's say I say here, my first name is Ruben and my last name is Learner, let's just say. And let's say that I arrive at a hotel somewhere and they want to greet me. So how could they do that? Well, they're going to use a string, right? They're going to want to create a string and then print that string out. So we'll say s equals, we'll say hello plus first name plus blank space plus last name plus period. And then we can say, you know, how are you today? And then we do a print of s. And this certainly works. And it works because we can add strings together. The plus operator works on many different data types in Python, including on strings. And there's technically nothing wrong with this, but as you can imagine, this gets really, really annoying. Let me give you another example. What if I say x equals 10 and y equals 20? And I want to say s, you know, is, well, I want to say x plus y equals x plus y, but of course I don't want x and y there. I want to have the actual values. So what I would have to do is say something like x plus, plus, space there, plus y plus equals, plus x plus y, and we'll even put it on plus and period, just to make it all the more ridiculous. And then I say print s. And what are we going to get here? Well, actually, we're going to get an error. And we're going to get an error because x and y, as well as x plus y, are all integers. And you cannot in Python add, with the plus uh, operator, an integer and a string. So what do I do? Well, I can try, right? But one thing I can do is I can get my mouse to move the right place. I can say stir of x and stir of y is stir of x plus y. And you can imagine then, this is ridiculous, right? Like, no one wants to write code like this. So what is the solution? Well, the solution for many years was to use the format method, the stirred up format method. Um, and that worked certainly. Let me show you what that would look like. I would say here something like s equals, and I'd say, hello, I'll we'll say zero, one, how are, you today. And then I would say here something like print s dot format of first name and last name. And the idea was that the string served as a template and then I would apply format and you know, provide some arguments and then it would work fine. And you could see here that I could use the numbers in curly braces. The numbers were referred to the numbered arguments that we get here. If you're familiar with it, then these are actually arguments were in splat args. So it was a tuple and thus I would get tuple index zero, tuple index one, and so on and so forth. You could also use double slash KWR if you want to use names. I actually didn't do that very often. One of the nice things is that let's say that our hotel manager here had gone and taken a management course. and They were told to always use the customer's name in every sentence as many times as possible. So they say, how are you today? Zero. Right? And then it would say, hello, Ruben Lerner. How are you today, Ruben? Which is both cloying and probably standard practice in many businesses. So the format method certainly works. And could I do the same thing here with my numbers? Yeah, I could say here s equals, and I will say here like 0 plus 1 equals 2, and I would say here print of s dot format of x, y, and x plus y. And that would certainly work as well. But again, this felt really annoying, artificial, and bloated. So as of Python 3.6, we have f strings. Now, this follows in a long tradition of having special kinds of strings with letters before them. So we had in Python 2 Unicode strings, you put the lowercase u before the opening quote, and that was then a Unicode string. We don't need to do that in Python 3 anymore. You have raw strings in which everything, every backslash is doubled, that's an R before the opening quote. And all this means then is use an F before the opening quote. And then anything inside of curly braces in the string is evaluated and the result is inserted. So what do I mean? Well, let's take my example from before. I can say s equals f string of hello, first name, last name. How are you today, first name? And then I can just print that out, print s. 
and that works just fine. By the way, you don't need these two steps. You can just do a print of this string. The reason I'm doing this is because so, so, so many people believe that there's some uh, uh, like really tight connection between print and F strings, and there isn't. There isn't. F strings create strings. There's no difference between S and any other string in Python. If I say, what's the type of S? It's just a plain old string. It's just how we define it that is different. So that's a simple thing we do with f strings. Uh, we can also say here, you know, s equals f string of x plus y equals x plus y. And I can say print of s, and sure enough, that'll work just fine also. And what you see then is both in the format method, which still exists as you can see, but we don't really use it so much, and in f strings, automatically things are turned into strings. The stir operator, or the stir, I should say, class, is invoked on any uh, thing we're going to give it. So that's like the basics of f strings. And truth be told, my fingers are now just sort of so used to f strings that whenever I'm going to create a string, I just do little f. You know, I take more effort to not put the f in before I use quotes than to put the f in. I'm, I'm that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm that sort of used to it. So what else can we do? Well, there are all sorts of cool tricks that come from the format method that have been then added to over the years. So let me give you a few quick examples. So let's say here, uh, let's even you know stick with our hotel example here. So f equals you know, F of hello, first name, and last name. But let's say, right, S, and that works just fine, but let's say that we're dealing with, you know, a big bureaucracy, a big company, and they need to have a certain number of characters in each field. Maybe they're filling something out. So what I can do is I can say here, whoop, my mouse is all crazy today. There we go. Okay, so what if I do this? What if I say first name, colon 15, and last name, colon 15? So every data type, not every, but like pretty much every data type, can be modified with a format string. And that comes after a colon inside of the curly braces. So I can do this and watch what I get. Each of these names, my first name and my last name, are now printed on a field of 15 characters. If it goes beyond that, then it will indeed go beyond that. But if it's not 15 characters, then you know, it's padded. Okay, well, what else can we do with these things? Watch this. It gets really snazzy. Well, what I can do is I can say here, I can say, watch this, you can say, write 15. I can say here, character that. And now it's going to write justify in that field. Right, so my first name is all the way to the right of that field. And my last name is actually centered inside of the field, as best as can be done, you know, with these characters. So that's pretty, you know, that's pretty snazzy there. So I can say here, you know, less than left justifies and caret centers and greater than right justifies. Don't try doing like greater than or equal and so forth. But I can get even better than that. Watch what I can do here. I can say here, first name, oops, first name, and let's do here, star greater than 15. And we'll say here, underscore caret 15. And look at that. Now, the character filling in where we don't have enough is actually star or underscore. And so every different data type that you can imagine, at least certainly the built-in ones, have these sorts of things. You can do this with integers, with floats, if you want to restrict how many uh, um, digits you're going to show of floating point numbers. Right, if I say here, x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and y equals, you know, 90 point, I don't know, 12. Now I can say here, print, uh, x plus y equals x plus y, and we're going to get that there. And by the way, this is, of course, because floats are not completely accurate in Python, but fine, we'll deal with that. And then what I can do is I can say here, let's make this, oh, my mouse is really going crazy today. I can say here, like, 4.2, right? And now it's going to, like, restrict how many I can have there. Let's do, like, 4.3, fine. And you see it's like going to show a total of four digits. And so basically, like, we're sort of stuck. But if I were to say, like, you know, 8.3, oh, this is where I get like the little mixed up, like you know, 9.6, something like that. Then we'll have all of them, right? And if I reduce this to 3, you'll see that now it's like reduced because we can't actually show the entire number, all right? So and I can do this here, I can like do x plus y colon, let's say here, like, you know, 5.3, something like that. Okay, so now we're in scientific notation for everything. But you get the point, hopefully, that you can play with how many digits you're actually going to show and how accurate it's going to show up. Okay, let me show you one last cool thing that I love uh, doing with uh, F strings here, just to, like prove the point here. Oops, don't do that. Put it down there. Okay, so actually, I'm going to create a dictionary. A100 
B, C, D, E, two, and then F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, like three, four, five, six. And then we'll say here O, P, and we'll say seven, eight. And I can take four key value in the items, print the value. And that'll work just fine, right? You can see then what we're doing there, right? We're going through and we're printing it out. But of course, now it's all like mixed up and crazy and kind of annoying. So what I can do is I can say key colon 10. Oops, not there. Key colon 10. And now we're going to have a nice field there. I can say the value is going to be on, let's say, colon 6. And so now you can see that we've created this little table. But we can get even better than that because if I say that my keys are going to be flush left with dots, watch them say dot, flush left 10, get rid of this colon, and I can say here, dot, flush right 6, look at that. Now I've created a table, and it works just fine, and it's all thanks to f-strings. So you definitely want to be familiar with f-strings. What I've shown you here is basically what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, um, maybe except for the flows where I have to play with it even a little more, what can I say? Um, anything more complex than this, truth be told, I then go and I look it up in the documentation. Um, which there is plenty of um, on the Python website, python.org. All right, I hope this gave you a good sense of what you can do with F-strings and how you can use them. Don't forget that you can always subscribe to my free weekly newsletter with lots of Python tips, better developers. You can hit me up on Twitter, where I also post things about Python. And of course, subscribe to me here on YouTube, where I'm always posting new videos. Thanks a lot, and I'll be back soon with more Python tips.